Welcome one and all to Hollywood, California, Meltdown Comics. Harmon Town is now in session. Let's bring out the mayor of Harmon Town. You know him. You love him, Dan Harmon. Thank you so much. Uh, he won the debates. He won. Come on. <laughs> He's just so good. So facile. He's a people pleaser. He's a verbal wizard. <laughs> is he, what he is. He grabbed my attention like it was a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking our guest tonight, who works around uh, sexuality a lot, um, uh, to confirm something that I felt. But it isn't a... It's not... It's not on topic about that that recording but it it also feels like i feel look guy there guys do talk like that but only when they're impotent like 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 that is the that's what i want it's, it's, like, that's not a you don't talk like that when your dick works it, it, and for me to say that it's like it's like oh well yeah but that, that like makes it worse because it's like you talk the, the adding to this thing but it's also important like i don't, I don't like the idea that that guy cuz you know you don't you don't you don't you don't say that to another yeah. guy you also don't because, you say, no, I, you could do whatever you want when you're start you could grab by a pussy that's like the top of my list and and like you wouldn't say that if your wiener worked yeah Sean Connery never had had to grab anybody by the pussy, because... <laughs> or tell another guy about it in a trailer. Well, it's like, also, yeah, we know you're a star. It's yeah. like, like, there's all this evidence how, how, here. What, the what, thing what, that he what has a great to keep meeting pounding. of the minds of Billy Bush and Donald Trump is. It's really, I mean, yeah, uh, there's not a not a wet vagina in a hundred miles from there. <laughs> and I thought it was, yeah, I thought it steeped things in dis- dishonesty further for Billy Bush to be like, like, I am so boy, I was a different, you know, oh, 11 years ago and all this stuff. To just say what it really was, which is that. It's you know he's, he's laughing nervously because he can't believe this is like wh- oh, why so, is this guy saying it's, this? I, I, I'm in a bus with Donald Trump and he's being a lunatic and it's hilarious. I mean, what's he what, is is he truly like a, a, you know like I, ideologically? I guess philosophically the answer is yes. Is he really supposed to in that moment? So I have to stop you there, sir, um, <laughs> and demand that you apologize to the women of America that may be listening to this one day. Like like like, or is he supposed to just go like? <laughs> 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 I mean, the question is, was he going like, (laughs) the space work was off there. (laughs) Billy Bush. Uh, What what I wonder is, um, because, you know, you've worn lots of mics. You've you've had a mic on. Like, I I do lots of live shows where there's a microphone on you. And I try to remember to mute myself if I ever have to go use the restroom or... Or say something flagrantly sexist, you know. <laughs> but I don't. They, they clearly didn't know that they were being recorded because right. if they did, then they wouldn't have done it. Right. But I love the fact that there was an engineer who's like, "I'm just gonna fucking sit on this thing for all, like, <laughs> yeah. for eleven years." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. I, t- I, mean, I t- Wayne I, Brady. One time, I was shooting a terrible TV show before I was on Whose Line. Before he was on Whose Line, called Quick Wits, which is a very. very uh, uh, ill-fated show on NBC a long time ago. Wayne Brady went to the bathroom. His mic, <clears throat> his mic was hot, and he went to go pee, <laughs> but he was still live in the studio. And it was rehearsals. There was no no audience there, but it was everybody else. It was, it was all like like Steve Carell was there. Like it was like all these people before they became anybody. And Wayne Brady was peeing, and he, we could just hear zip, <laughs> pee, and then. Zippity doo da, zippity day, my. He sang the whole fucking zippity doo da. And we were shitting ourselves. And he came back in, and he didn't understand why everybody was so happy. So, like, the, 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 the hot mic giveth and the hot mic taketh away. <laughs> I, to this day, I swear, if you, if you run into a, an actor from Community, and you and they and they men- they start talking about Chevy Chase. They instinctively start going like this because it was like a. The, 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 if you're talking about anything that could be potentially scandalous in this internet age, it's like it's like you're, you're mic'd. You're hitting the you hit the mic. So it's like 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 every time I'd set, people would go like, oh yeah. And then this morning when he, uh, I was, and then you started. <laughs> 
but I swear, like, like I've seen them like in parking lots, like, like off, off the clock, like, like it's like, oh, Yvette, oh, hey, Joel, and they come up to you, how have you been? Oh, it's been years. Yeah, I was like, oh, did you hear about it? Did you hear about the thing? I, I was like, what are they doing? Do they Wait, have the vapors? Is, is, is that an inst- Are they doing a bit or is that No, no. They, I've, see, I've watched it happen and then both of them realized they were doing it and then, and then start That's laughing right. and then explain it to me because I'm not an actor so I never I didn't know what was going on either. I was like, what the hell is it? And then they explained it and I was like, oh my God, it's hilarious. But it's also scandalous and, 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 and but, but, but I'll... I, I'll there, that's, I think it works like that. You can just knock it out. Uh, I just want to. H- Halloween's coming up, and, and it's it's you know we'll have a we'll have a, another show or two before the actual event. But right now is time to you still have time to stop working on your your really hacky basket of deplorables Halloween costume <laughs> or any other topical wordplay driven uh, uh, costume. Yeah, the t- just just get a vinyl cape and some teeth if you're that empty. Uh, it's not a holiday for w- word puzzles. Uh, Wait, why it's do, for you, fun. do you? Uh, don't make do me. You, have you heard of somebody who's making a basket of deplorables costume? No, Cody f- predicted that she was. I was like, t- we were talking about like, <laughs> like who are the? What are the fucking costumes that are gonna just make yeah. you want to p- p- hit people with a bottle? Like, like, <laughs> and it's just always like it's the people that are like, 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 oh look what I am. I've talked about this before. Like, like the you know, like, I'm Picasso's blue period. Yeah, like you have to good. put it all together. <laughs> Oh, so you are. You never laugh out loud, you know. And then it's like they want to live in a world where Halloween is like this parlor game where, you, where everyone's running around and going like, uh, 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 "Read my lips, no new taxes." Like, like, and they're like a big lip, and there's like a tax coming out, and they're like, "Yep." <laughs> I don't like. I just just be a werewolf or something, man. Come the, on. The, the only funny one I ever saw. I think I probably mentioned this when we talked about this a long time ago. Was my friend Melissa dressed up as Barbie and she had a big shrimp on her head and she was shrimp on the Barbie it was pretty good I don't I, I will I don't I don't I don't, I don't approve <laughs> that's exactly what I'm talking about I don't I don't I don't but, you're, but, you're, but you're, that one you, you saw it and you instantly knew what it was like you didn't have to puzzle over it okay may, may, uh, maybe okay maybe I guess I just don't want I don't want your I don't want your costume to be a riddle I don't want it to have an, a question and an answer I don't want yeah. it's like you know if you're gonna do that go, go as what you are wait, wait. a vampire but Dan Dan <laughs> you're just going as a different kind of vampire this, this, everybody this is coming from a gentleman who once found a, uh, an old computer monitor on the side of the road put it on his head dressed up in fur and called him and put horns on the side of the computer monitor and called himself monitor yeah <laughs> Because it was joyful, and it was like, it was a... What's the difference? No, because that's like a He-Man figure. That's like, like look, I'm Monitor. Do that, yeah. Be like, be like, yeah. How is that diff- different than Shrimp on the Barbie? Because it, it couldn't beat He-Man? Like, I'm saying, like... like that's make sexist. A, You're being sexist now. No, make a, make a thing that has a name. Like... But you were doing the Minotaur, but you were a Monitor... I'm saying it's it's a, it's a fine line you're you're walking there. I, it's a it's a it's a you want to you want a fine but 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 solid line. It's not blurry. It's like yeah, I guess it's razor thin, but it's a line that still separates like joy from joylessness. Didn't you win? <laughs> didn't you win a, con- a contest at yes, Molly Malone's? Yes, because they felt my relaxation uh, and joy. Like like it was a, a big fat dude in a fur diaper with a computer monitor on his head, a monitor, and I won because I was living the dream. I was cheating the system, and and they loved it, and and yeah. <laughs> Like I, 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 I do Halloween right. I start with comfort. I, I, I back into a, an explanation. I, I just I go to the ninety nine cent store. I see some stuff. I tape it to my body. Do you remember the time that I, I didn't win the the pumpkin carving contest because there was a conspiracy against how good my pumpkin was? Yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, carved a dragon into a pumpkin and people got all bummed out about it. Like, yeah, but you're not supposed to be good at it. It's supposed to be scary faces. Yeah. We, we, we knew who won. <laughs> all right. So I, I, was, I was out of town. I was in Santa Monica for a wedding uh, this weekend. And, I, and this is the craziest thing. To, well, this is a first for me. I, I, I ran into my wedding planner uh, on, the, on the beach 
Like I was just walking and I'm there for another wedding and then I ran into I didn't know who she was at first. She was like, Dan Harmon, as I live and breathe. And I'm like, 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 I don't know who that is. It's, it's like, like, it, but she's standing on Santa Monica Beach with a clipboard and a pen. So she's, she's, a wedding uh, however I know her. Like like something's happened since then that that I don't want to you know ask questions about like 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 just like like getting signatures for a for a for a new shampoo or something I I I, I don't think I ever knew anybody like so I was like I, I don't know what what I, I, I and I stepped a couple steps and then I was like wait shit she said she's out here working. Who works on a clipboard or the pen on the beat? And then I was like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my God. It's Christine. It's my wedding planner. And then I was like filled with this shame because I was like, oh, I'm sorry. It didn't, it didn't work out. <laughs> and she's like, I don't care. Get married again. <laughs> she like, gets paid by the hour. <laughs> by the wedding, at least. Yeah. yeah. She's got no back end on that. <laughs> But I was like filled with this grief, like like your wedding planner is really invested in the institution of marriage. I I put I planned the fuck out of that thing. It was a good wedding. Everybody agrees it was a great wedding. The marriage is up to me. It's not her problem. Um, and then she was she had been recently divorced too. Like she would she had been recently married. I mean her her like like that was also a, that made it nice and relieving. She's like D- divorce is better. Yeah, it is. It is. It's better than marriage. I mean, that's a good. It's bu- easier. It's a good business model for a wedding planner. You want everyone. You she's, want those. You want that. You want turnover. Yeah, she may. She may do that on purpose. Maybe when she's when she's talking to clients, she's like, "I just got married and it's great." Like, and then when she runs into her I former clients, divorced, she's like, too. "I just got divorced. You should get married again." <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, there, there's some uh, 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 Vice thing uh, uh, there, the, the the special that I haven't watched yet. But the director of uh, Great Minds was telling me about it. Uh, uh, they they used HIV to kill cancer. They like you can modify HIV's protein structure so that its little noodle that it uses to plug into white blood cells only plugs into cancer cells. And so they tried it on 20 kids with leukemia, and 18 of them are alive and cancer free. I think I'm going to get some of this wrong. You're going to watch it or look it up and like like go ahead and correct me. So but you can give cancer AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine living in our lifetime where, where, where we not only cure cancer, but, but, but we use AIDS? Like, and it's not, and after, you, after, after, after you laugh at that, because it's like, oh, yeah, it's like when the raptors fought the, the, the supersaurus or whatever. It's, it's, it's like, it's like uh, I could have just said raptors tackled the T-Rex of the Jurassic Park, but I don't know if these kids have seen Jurassic Park 1. Um, <laughs> A lot of lot of lot of lot of lot of kids online decrying Westworld for that. They're, they're like this Crichton guy, you know. This, so you know you're talking to a millennial uh, TV viewer when they're like exposing Michael Crichton's formulaic use of the oh that old dinosaur park idea recycled for your new cowboy show, eh? Ah! Fool me once, Mr. Crichton. <laughs> oh, oh, you fucking star baby. <laughs> you fucking 25 year old immortal little AI puke. I, I, uh, Is it good? I've been out of town. I haven't seen it. I loved it. I I, I, I can't wait. It's going to be on again tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll see how the series plays out. But I, the pilot delivered uh, every, everything that I said I wanted because I was like, this should be a show about like creepy scientists living underneath a fake deadwood where and because they deal with people that are just like so much more than sex dolls so much more than t- uh, sh- uh, uh, target uh, practice like these they're creating life down there but they're also creating it for the exact purpose of like using it hedonistically so i want to see like weird polysexual like confused psychological people in lab coats having weird relationships with these nano nano slabs that they then push up into this town and force to live on narrative loops uh with it, it inspired by like uh you know what we've learned about that science from like video games and stuff and the new, the new depiction of westworld instead of it just being like james brolin being like come on you can shoot him just go shoot him it's like it's so much more realistic the depiction of what it's like to like show up to Westworld because of we've played all these video games now where you've we've had to create those environments so it's like you walk down the street and there's just like a guy going like who will who will step up and fight this varmint you know it's like like, like they're like talking and kind of they have narrative loops is, that it, they, is there a Yul Brynner bad guy in this one is, he, is, is there yes but, but well I don't want to uh, yes 
Yes, but he's human. But so, so, and that just represents like the, the, everything's kind of inverted. Okay. So, like, like, like it's, it's it's a revisitation. Who's playing Richard Benjamin's eyebrows in, in this? Uh, <laughs> show? I mean, actually, you should just you should just watch it. I'll I mean, watch it. The pilot I'll... is definitely worth watching. It's a mind blower, um, and I, I hope the, I hope the series like uh, is, can be can fill our uh, can fill our Game of Thrones uh, hole. Um, I, uh, Whatever. Okay, so I ran. Whatever. Okay. Well, I also. Dan, uh, tonight I'm going to fill your Game of Thrones hole. <laughs> That's my promise. Uh, let's let's bring out our guest. Uh, I won't make the verbal segue from from that to that, but uh, <laughs> she is uh, certainly. I've I've called her the Michael Jordan of porn, like uh, which is which is no. It's, it's like, like she's she's been in 437 films uh, f- so far. This is a, re- remember the the, the current uh, the the modern porn world. Like it's it's like beyond music in terms of like how hard it would be to be distinct uh, and 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 rack up uh, like like you know for people to know your name. But I think a lot of people have heard the name Riley Reed, haven't you? All right. <laughs> three, um, three dudes audibly came just now. <laughs> Uh, in 2013, LA Weekly ranked her eighth on their list of ten porn stars who could be their next Jenna Jameson, which means nothing now because Jenna Jameson was, wasn't living in this crazy world where Ed porn is like growing on trees and free to everybody. That was back when Jurassic Park was in the <laughs> Yes. Um, I mean, for, yeah. Uh, so she's she's her, she, her awards, her her accolades, and things. I mean, if there's anybody that represents like the. She's the she's the most legit porn star I think we could uh, uh, you know have to talk to about this stuff and she's a she's a wonderful gal and uh, made friends with her recently because Justin noticed from her Instagram that she was a big Rick and Morty fan because she <laughs> she was like she she was singing a song from Rick and Morty uh, I think while p- pushing her butt up in the air. I can't remember it was like it was a head, head head bent over raised the posterior it's the the, the 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 song that the president does with Rick and Morty and that she was singing anyways so he reached out to her and 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 said hey hey I want to be friends and she she's been to the she she we we were we talked to her more on the Dan relax take a take a <laughs> I'm excited, I'm excited. T- t- <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> you, you weren't this nervous when Robin Williams was on the show. <laughs> Please welcome Riley Reed. <laughs> Can I get you a drink? Would you like a, another vodka on the rocks? Uh, I'm still drinking my okay. current Great. one, but thank you. Yep. I'm a gracious host. So, Riley, Riley is that true? You, you, you were, were you singing a Rick and Morty song during one of your films? It wasn't during one of my films. It was just like a recording on my Instagram video oh, okay. where I was like, head, bend over, raise the posterior. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. I'm like definitely probably the number one Rick and Morty fan, so. Nice. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I've got like my limited, adi- a, a, you know, limited edition jacket right oh, here. Oh shit, you got one number of those. Number fifteen. Okay. Yeah, I got number two. Well, you should have. A- nah, he does the voices. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have texted you or whatever, however you did to reach I out to you. I actually reached out to him. Oh really? Yeah, I was like asking questions about Rick and Morty. Oh awesome. He's so like, I'm, when I'm looking at my phone, by the way, I'm not being aloof. I'm like, I have like sh- notes have written notes, down here. Yeah. I think we should get we should get w- one of the first things. Out of the way, actually. Well, let's save it. Let's put a pin in the Prop 60 Ooh. thing because the stuff oh, you God. were telling me backstage is like it's it's really important. You're seeing these ads already tonight during the debates about this Prop 60 thing. You like like I'm. It, it's a fucking house of mirrors. I didn't even that 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 we, we you you want to hear what she has to say. So that when you're voting, then this thing is dropped on you as a California voter that you're informed. Um, uh, but but okay, here's like a question you're probably sick of ask answering. But but I it's like. How, you have a relationship. You have a boyfriend. How long have you been with your boyfriend? We've been together over a year. Um, how? But even aside from that, that's not even related. But like, how is porn sex different from the sex you have off camera? Is there? Is there? Well, it's totally different. One because there's more people in the room than, <laughs> than one-on-one sex. But I mean, it's also the intimate connection, you know, because we're so in love and whatnot. So that's like a totally different realm than when I'm like having sex with somebody on camera. It's like more of a grotesque. Like I'm just gonna fuck you and then 
work with you again maybe a couple weeks later or something. What, uh, it, it, well, in terms of, yeah, if you're an objective viewer, which it's a, if you were a, a person uh, floating in the corner of the room that, that was invisible and it was watching you have intimate have sex love-based sex... <laughs> what what mechanical things are different? You're doing things for the cameras, I assume. Yeah, right? I mean, like, you're definitely doing things for the camera. I have to be and not. I mean, for some pornos, they are like you know romance scene where they don't even want us to acknowledge the existence of a camera, and they don't care about opening up. But usually, I have to like hold my ass cheek to make sure you can see the penetration, and you know, you're not. It's not as you know. Usually, when I'm like fucking, I like to ride my boyfriend's dick and like have my clit rubbing against him as well as the penetration and in regular porn Riley, sex, I expected more candor out of you. <laughs> Don't let this face deceive you. Stop deflecting from the question. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get to the truth here. I'm just saying it's... it's you it's have a favorite have position. Open. It's just being having to open up for the camera. Like, no matter what position, from doggy or this or that, even, like, right. you just have to, like, I have to hold my ass cheek open, you know? What I imagine is, in porn, like, like in, more, a, in a scene, you're required to hit, like, in an average porn scene, you have to hit, like, all these, like, Kama Sutra, like, Oh, hieroglyphics. yeah, I mean, we have four positions minimum kind of a thing. You always have to have four positions. It's and like there's the, always blowjob in between. So, like, that's, like, you know, the usual mandatory kind of a thing. And then... There's the, you know, the scenario that goes along with the porno that usually they want you to keep alive throughout your sex scene. So they want you to, they def, otherwise whether, it becomes very illegal if you don't keep alive the <laughs> I think. Well, no, no, no. I mean like, you know, if I'm the pizza delivery girl, they want me to talk oh, about, you they know, want you to keep talking my about pizza. Might call me. I should go back to work, <laughs> you know, like they want us to keep that essence alive. It's not I I'm not really, you know, I mean, sometimes we'll foreplay at home, but yeah. it's not the whole stereotype. Of I it. mean, we definitely lost the narrative when we lost film. Like you've seen Boogie Nights, I assume. Like, and they go, yeah, that's that transition from film to video, where where that that foreshadows the transition from from to the internet world, where porn is just now. It's like. Is it, is Gonzo the right word? Would it's just like it's it's just like it's not narrative at all? Or is it, does Gonzo mean like brutally disgusting? No, or? no, no. Gonzo means like it's just like hey, we're fucking. Right. And we're, it's like, like yeah, hey, what's no your name, Samantha? Story. How old are you? Okay, here's a dick, and like like <laughs> that's Gonzo. Yeah, like, you're 18, right? Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so the the. the w- just to go back to that that one loop though, because I'm just curious that it's. A, it's it, the you're hitting those four bases for instance when you're doing a scene for work when you're being intimate with someone that you love are you you said you mentioned you have this this favorite position might that mean that it's like you don't you don't you you guys don't hit all there's not like a bunch of no it's, it's no, like you, I mean, you might I mean, just do a very boring like like let's just well, yeah, do this I mean, because this is what i like sometimes we like wake up in the morning and we just have like regular morning sex other times you know we're like in the kitchen and we're fucking everywhere in the kitchen you know so it's like it's definitely in the heat But a of plumber the- never comes in and goes, what's going on here? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> we changed neighborhoods and sinks. Uh, what what is the difference, Riley, between a good porn director and a bad one? Like, like I, I, do, do- I hate when the porn directors t- try to micromanage the sex. So there are... Sometimes I'm on a sex scene and they're like, okay, now like run your hand down his chest and then... Put your fingers in his pants. That's like a line reading for like, a regular actor. They're times, like, don't tell me how to talk. Yeah, no, there's literally times where I've been on set, and it's really sad that there is literally a woman sitting there telling me what to do. I'm like, how do they even edit your voice out? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, literally the whole time, she is like, okay, now brush her hair behind her ear. And Aww. Like, it's, I mean, yes, it's sweet, but at the same time, it's just like... I, I don't understand why her presence is here. Like I don't. Wait, who was she? Was she a director? Or was she? She was a director. Okay. Like, this was this was actually for Penthouse, and right. I was like so disappointed. I was like, micromanaged sex. Like you're gonna tell me how to squeeze and lick his balls. Like right. I can't just go and do it. Yeah. Like, that, but, okay. Yeah. Girl, that's good to know. Like. <laughs> no, that's interesting. That's a, 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 like the the in terms of just the. We were talking, and I think we can segue then into the Prop 60 thing, because, um, like, well, first of all, like, is there, do you perceive a wall between yourself because you work in porn and, like, civilians, like, anybody outside that industry? Like, do you think that you're, 
like do you feel alienated isolated do do you do you like if you would you if you go to a uh, party and someone says, "What do you do?" Is there like a? I mean, do you do you? No, I'm like I'm personally very comfortable with what I do. Like I'll sit next to a plane, I'll sit on a plane next to somebody if they ask me what I do. I'm just blunt and I tell them like I'm a porn star, adult actress, and usually they're like, "Oh," like and then sometimes when I say adult actress, they're like, "Like were you a child star?" Kind of uh. thing. Like people are very confused sometimes, and right. I've also happened that happened where a lady was like writing a book on sex uh, sex workers so she was like oh my god like you're can i ask you a million questions right. you know like but uh i'm very comfortable personally so i don't usually have any like weird issues with that but i do get recognized a lot i do have a lot of people like no you're extremely recognizable the, the so and that that's the other part of the question is like how safe do you feel because i it, it, podcasting like you, you, uh, it's not really safe. As sometimes I feel like it's not fair because they have an un- like they have an advantage where I can't give the first impression of myself. They already have the impression of who I am, so it's like an unfair advantage because like I have no idea who you are, but you guys have seen my asshole, right. you know. Like so, it's you know it's kind of like not fair, but right. it's also very interesting. Well, and tonight, also- Riley, we have a we have a special uh, gift for you. We're gonna make everybody here show you their asshole. <laughs> yeah. Man. We have to have a custodian of records yes. go through first yes. and collect birth certificates. And then... I should tell you. I should tell you something about those chocolates I handed out before the show. <laughs> They're filled with tape head cleaner. <laughs> Do you know about that thing? Or are you too young? But tape, amyl, tape head cleaner is like nitrate. an anal, anal dilator. It's amyl, like, amyl nitrate. Oh. Like like it dilates oh, your sphincter. Oh, I've heard of popper. VHS yeah. tape head cleaner. It's, if you huff it, it makes your butthole get okay. nice yeah, I've heard of pu- ready for poppers. It like re- relaxes you yeah. or something. It also gets you high, but also it relaxes your butthole. <laughs> yes, yes. I've definitely uh, heard of those. Well, so, so how, 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 what... I would think though stalking is what I'm talking about. Like, so you, you, like, we have a twisted relationship with sex and the sex industry in this country. We have we have a twisted relationship with fame. We have a twisted relationship with media fantasy. Like, we don't have our, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying there's some other country where it's like where they've achieved it, but I'm just saying like we there there. I would if you told me that you get frightened for your life seven times a day, I wouldn't be shocked. But I don't know. Like, like, the, the, yeah, the, no, I fans don't. think they know you. Fans, like... I mean, definitely. Like, some fans really think they know me. I've had, like... I've never had, like, a stalker. I've never had to, like, put a restraining order really? on somebody. Yeah, luckily, thank God. I'll have have you ever met Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> thank God, no, and I don't plan on yeah, I mean, it. yeah, you, you might get the ac- actual amount of negative or unwanted attention that anybody would get like being a good looking woman like you might you might just get that anyway right well then you compound that yeah, with but I, mean, arch- I get a lot of emails like i'll get some crazy emails from like some fans who like they'll start off the email talking about how much they love me and then it's like and i hate you so much and then i also love you and, and then, i hope and i then never you- talk to you again and then they'll email me two days later right like when there, then I imagine there's again only- riley i told you i was sorry about this <laughs> Sometimes there's I get probably drunk. a lot of confusion there because there's no there's no culture there's no to custom separate. to set the boundaries yeah, there's they no don't know. so so yeah, yeah they, they have an intimate knowledge of you that like that that you don't have of them and people people I mean people feel a weird uh, emotional uh, connection with actors that don't show everything and do everything. So yeah, you, you're getting a whole that's different That's the thing. Order, like podcasting yeah. itself, like you listen to somebody for two hours a week every week for, for a couple of years. It's like, I don't, I don't think it's – I'm not shocked at all when I run into people. I'm very lucky with the, 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 the people that like listen. To, but they, there's, it's definite. And I, I have that relationship with people that I listen to on podcasts. I, go, I run into somebody that I listen to a lot, and I'm like, I know this person. I own this person a little bit. There's like, like I know who they are. Like you said, there's an advantage there. So I just like, but but I guess that's the end of the conversation because it's very uplifting news that you're you're like no no you, you haven't you've never filed a single restraining order like, like kind of says it all like it's not as yeah, bad as I would think. Usually my fans are really neighborly. Like if I see them, they're just like Yo Riley Reed, you know. Like, they're super <laughs> they're, chill. There, there also like, might be another. I mean, I, I'm guessing this, but I'm probably wrong. But like people have seen and know so much about you physically and like and intimately that there's really like. Like they, they've 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 already got the answer to all those questions. Like, like 
Yeah, I mean that's something to be said for. I mean, do, do you have an opinion about that in general? Like, like um, uh, you were well, you were gonna you were a psychology major in college, weren't you? Like, yeah, like very Wikipedia. briefly, but yes. I dropped out before the end of my freshman year. I was a, I was a, I was gonna be a psych minor, but that means nothing when you're a freshman. So yeah, anyway. did it. But 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 you have an interest in this shit ostensibly. Like, what do you do? You have an opinion about like our relationship on a national level with pornography like what is going on there i mean i think that just goes on like a person like a personal intelligence level you know with somebody who's able to distinguish the difference that this is fantasy and this is this person's job and you know when people choose to believe that the bang bus is real like they're allowing themselves (laughs) to be manipulated by society wait i'm gonna stop you right there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if the I bang- have to believe in something. <laughs> uh, the fucking bang bus. <laughs> but collectively, do you perceive our our country? Again, you can stop me and go. This isn't my jurisdiction, but <laughs> but we've got we've got well, there's debates going on right now where there's a guy who's a you know rampant like verbal misogynist of nothing else who did, like 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 hearsay he says and he's running against the f- who will be the first female president. So there's issues coming up like 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 as a woman and as a pornographic actor. Like, wh- what is your like how do you see this country's relationship like in general not into indiv- you, you you meet all these different people but like are we when you take us all collectively are we sick are we healthy are we like is there anything that could be said that needs to change in general or is it just a fucking complicated well i mean i know one thing is that we currently like the most popular taboo is no longer incest which was definitely a thing for a while where you know the most popular. I, t- porn. I took a break from uh, <laughs> my, my my search engine probably no, contributed good. to that a lot. Big part of that. <laughs> what was the, what? What is now the number one taboo? Uh, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it is. I think it might be tranny porn, but um, it was for a very long time incest porn. Huh. So that's. That says a lot for you. Like right Pornhub, now. you you like Pornhub has like been mainstreamifying porn a little bit. Like they, they some some somewhat consciously, somewhat just indirect result of it being a porn hub. Um, <laughs> but they issue like these press releases and go like uh, like they'll do little funny things on April Fool's Day. They'll uh, they'll they'll issue they'll go like oh it's St. Patrick's Day. Here's how many people search for leprechaun porn. Which I always thought, I thought it was a very positive thing because it's like they're they're acknowledging just as like uh, the what's his face Kinsey did like that was the part of that story was like it was about revealing to everybody that their relationship with sex was 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 simultaneously private and therefore a beautiful snowflake but also shared by everybody everybody's a freak everybody everybody's everybody's coming and 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 going and. <laughs> Like, 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 and it's and it's okay. It's like, 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 it's, yeah, it's like I don't my, think there's anything wrong with porn. I don't think it's wrong. For well, I wouldn't us expect to you to say that. Yeah, but no, yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> but, but but I mean, like, like our attitude towards it. I I think I like I, I I feel like we're really fucked up about it, and that one of the things that we do and get away with because we're fucked up about it is we we treat your industry as if it's like. I don't know. It's like oh, it's definitely shunned upon. Like my, and industry. therefore, it's like the danger of that is like, well, if we value people, and if the like of our if our taboos about porn have to do with like caring about people, then like it's like we build this wall around this thing that we go like, oh, that's a toilet, you know, because that's where I go every night. Yeah. Um, no. And, yeah. I'm totally to a lot of people. Like I have like no meaning of life to them. Like they're like, oh, you're a porn star. Like exactly. Like I am a toilet to them. You know, like. Like, they say that I lose all... I can't think of the right word I want to say, but, like, you know, I'm just, like, no longer equal, you know? They're right. like, you have no rights, you know? Like I hope this doesn't offend you, but I I, 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 I heard a story... I was talking about you with Justin during Comic-Con. We had just seen you on the yacht, the Game of Thrones. People <laughs> invaded, and they didn't invade. We wanted them there. Uh, the, <laughs> they, they, they just seem like they're always invading. I mean, they're so... <laughs> They're so medieval, um, but but we, I was just mentioning. Oh, she seems so nice, and I asked her if she'd be on the podcast. And I, he, I heard a story like third hand through him about you being at a party, and like somebody just kind of like just it's just as a, as a casual matter of fact, like just somebody 
not from the industry, somebody that didn't know you, but somebody that was at a party with you, just kind of like like saying things and treating you in ways that sort of imply that that you that you were down for whatever because oh, of what yeah. you did for a living. Oh yeah, I I definitely have a lot of people who automatically assume that like I'm the world's biggest slut and I'm just gonna suck their dick right there. You know, <laughs> because like, you if you do it when you're working, then I mean, yeah, it's, it's, like yeah. I do it for a hobby. Let's like, like let's integrate. Uh, it's, like, yeah. like, I, I, Dan, that was very brave of you to admit that. <laughs> that I do it for a hobby yeah um, that's what I, I mean I wanted to yeah just like I mean I just like I think our attitude just in general like, I, and I'm sure this yeah, is going to change over I think time just automatically assume that I'm like this crazy sex freak you know it's just like even though they might be way hornier and freakier than I am they just automatically assume because I do it on camera and you know maybe just I have more confidence with it they automatically assume that I am like a freaky person like I have people who, like randomly tell me I like tell them I'm a porn star and they're like oh I was like raped once right and I'm like I don't know how this is associating I don't know how to respond to you like I'm just a sex worker but I have a question Riley like, like you hear stories like I mean I, I'm a crap actor and I do failed TV shows for a living but uh, <laughs> but there's times like it could be something big on camera like, like a big network thing or a small thing that we do for channel 101 like our little friends make videos uh, our little friends, our, our, our actual awesome friends, and you, you'll come home after like shooting something that was either well paid or not paid, and you, you feel this great sense of like, oh wow, that was really good. Like I, I did good work today. Like I've, yeah, I, definitely. I, there are days where you know. Also, it's because it goes all hand in hand. If I feel like my fellow peers were like killing it, then there's definitely days where I'm like, fuck, like that scene is probably going to win an award because oh, yeah. we like so killed you, it. You, you can go home after after having film sex and go like yeah like we we did it we did yeah it. That, yeah that definitely i mean there's definitely times where you can like feel like there was like a genuine sexual passion that was going on that you're like that was hot is, it, is that something you're striving for while you're doing it thinking like I, w- I want people to really watch this and i want this to be like endure like i want i want this to be a clip that people will, will like. well most times i just try to like enjoy it for what it is like i mean if i'm not really feeling the person it's going to probably show on camera and i'm not going to try to like false advertise it like you know like there's times where i'm not totally into my partner or you know like maybe they see i can't imagine I, i'm so easily distracted that there was eight people around with microphones and camera equipment and some someone well, that's t- also a really erotic part of it too that there's you know a guy holding a boomstick the whole time and i'm like you're just watching me slob on this knob you know <laughs> like so like there's other parts to it if maybe i'm not totally into like the person i'm fucking i'm like Oh yeah, well they're enjoying the show. Are there so. people? There must be because you've, you've you've been a, like you, you've done enough films now where you see an actor like another guy like oh geez not this fucking guy again. I have a no list. So <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. Oh you get kill rights now? You can say fuck that guy. I know. No yeah, way. there's like one guy I won't work with just because he makes the sound. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> This is the kind of shit I want to know about. <laughs> like, that, that's one guy. I'm just like, I'm like looking at the director, like, really? Like, I can't <laughs> even take this guy there's seriously. There's a, there's a, for, there's a, I, I end up with a lot of Russian stuff because I think it's like a, <laughs> it's a foot, foot fetish nylon thing. That's a, like, like, that's the, one of the categories that I'm into, like, like, like legs and hosiery and stuff. And so I, I end up like, I've seen this, there's this Russian guy and, um, his version of going, ugh, is ew <laughs> and I can't like I, I'm, I'm just like pants around my ankles just ready to go Saturday night I got my Emmy in one hand I got and I'm like I got everything I need to, 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 to see, be, see, see you're a left hander <laughs> and then he's just like ew 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 and I was like well for, it's, it's also it's like you think we might have like a foot in his face when he's saying that and I'm like well you're that's what you're supposed to say when someone puts a foot in your face that's not what you're supposed to say uh, anyways but, 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 but you 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 glossed over something that I think is kind of like I, I I this is just a like this is the big bug zapper in the room like like when you when people find out you're you're in this field like the association of that real or imagined with 
trauma. Like, 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 okay, so, like, that is something that people leap to. Something bad happened to you, like, like... It, oh, it, yeah, people ask my dad, when my dad's like, yeah, my daughter's a porn star, when it comes up, they are automatically like, did you do something to her? <laughs> like, and it's sad. It's really sad that my own dad kind of deals with it as well as I do, because nothing ever... I've always just been this crazy sexual fiend my whole entire life, so, like, when I was, like asked to be an extra on a porno I was like yeah that's awesome and then like I saw them doing it and I was like I want to do that too like, <laughs> I, can, I, can do I was better. already like having guys run trains on me I was having sex with girls threesomes orgies like all in high school like it was just totally fun and what I was doing so, so this like, industry is a place where where that, yeah, that, it's like that, a safe where that place. is lucrative where yeah. that is like your your status is rising when that happens instead of uh, yeah uh, we're uh, all uh, tested at or... high school you're you're like you're being <laughs> like maligned by the people that are well I mean I was probably yeah. I was definitely manipulating situation. <laughs> you were, you were, you were, you were the scar face of of, of your high school because you had the you had the goods. <laughs> um, but uh, speaking of which, like you're 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 like, a, but would you say? I mean, so so would you when you look at your childhood because it's a your Wikipedia says you were moved around a lot. You're you're from Florida. Those are two warning signs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's your red flag. Sorry, Florida. Um, the, but 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 I mean, it's like 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 relative to everybody in this room. Would you say squeaky clean, kind of like trauma free childhood? Is that what you're saying, or is it? It's a like like. You... I mean, it was like I I didn't really have trauma necessarily. I mean, like I lived a normal, you know, like middle class, if not like slightly lower kind of life. Like I mean, my parents were divorced and both remarried, but like. No, like, real trauma. Like, you know, everything was totally chill in my family. Like, I don't... I think I was pretty normal. Yeah. I remember, my I'm, mom was super open. I would tell her when I was going to do, like, acid and shrooms. I'm like, what? all right, mom, just so you know, like... What, what is the... Uh, like, I, I've met a couple people just, like, you know, over time, like, just li- living in town here. Like, people that have worked, like, as producers. And the, the, the two people that I know that were in it were like they were like really sleazy. Like, like, what's the industry like? Like, like in terms of the people that create it, direct it, run the websites. Is, is it a, is it a fun industry to be in, or is it is it a, are there a lot of creeps or what is it? Uh, I personally would consider it more fun, but um, I mean, there's definitely like the sleazy kind of creepy people. But I've like kind of worked my way. through past and through all of that. And now you get to pick and choose at your, at, at your yeah, status and, now. Yeah, yeah, and also, like, with the agency that I work with and everything, like, they, he only goes through... Like, I started off with a different agency who, like, sent me at once to Seattle, which I was like, this guy is just has a camcorder. Like, this is definitely mm-hmm. not a porno show. Yeah, so there's a, let's talk about that for a second, like, how it's structured, because most of us are just, like, we, it's anybody's guess. You have an agent. He, has, he works for an agency. Or yeah, she. he he runs his agency. He's like Mark Spiegler, uh, and uh, so he gets the, the, all the gigs come through him. He calls mm-hmm. you and says yeah. like, "Okay, d- double anal on the thirteenth, whatever." <laughs> uh, double anal? Is there such a thing as double anal? There that is sounds, definitely uh, double, it's, it's triple. Actually, it, and it's more. actually bad luck to do it on the thirteenth. <laughs> Uh, the, I don't do double anal. And then you, yeah, and you have stuff that you do do, don't do. Then there's the guy, and it's like whatever. And, you, <laughs> and then there's the price. And it's like, is it still the case as it was in the '90s? I mean, it was always like, like the women run the industry, like, like, or, or that was the that was maybe our overcompensatory, like, like sort of like like statement because the women get paid more, and the women do have like kill rights on scenes. Like, like the guy, if you if a, if a woman says I don't work with that guy, that guy is like 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 a significant part of his career is kind of fucked. Like, especially if the, if the woman is you. Um, um, and so, like, 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 even though, like, but I think back then, even though that was being said about the women that were in these scenes, the hierarchy was still probably male dominated. But now, is that different? Because you're your own boss, basically. Like, you have your own website. You you produce. You told me you edit your own stuff. And when I marveled at that, you're like, well, it's porn editing. <laughs> <laughs> Like I could be a pretty bad editor and still be a great porn editor, uh, but 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 it's still like pretty cool to imagine you with headphones and because uh, I'm assuming you have neighbors and then you're like, like and you're like you're like you're like got the fi- do you use Final Cut or Avid or what? I use Adobe. You Adobe like yeah. uh, Premiere. Premiere. Um, you ever you ever take it over into After Effects? Just throw some lasers in there. <laughs> <laughs> 
yet. Not yet. I did just do this pretty fun, like, Halloween thing, but no, nothing to that extent. But you're yet. producing your own stuff, so you're, and your website, readmylips.com? Yeah. Very clever. Uh, yeah. Um, that's like your, I don't get it. like. <laughs> I bet I bet most people who have seen your your face and heard your name, it's probably like Pornhub is becoming like this thing. That's like, yeah. that's got to be like an ally and an enemy to you, right? For sure. I mean, I definitely, I definitely am very fond of them because I do think that they help my career a lot. Like, especially I've, I've not for the last couple of years I haven't been less than rated number four. In the last couple of months, I've always been the rated number one porn star on Pornhub. So that automatically just comes up a lot and. Currently, I have like this program with them where if I upload my videos, then I get some money based on like ad views or whatever. So I have like, but I don't put any of like my super sex stuff that's like on my website. It'll be like me washing the dishes naked or mm -hmm. something. And that has like almost a million views. So, well, because I, and I've always said this about like the, the, no one knows how to monetize the internet except the, the, the porn industry has always been able to because the porn industry kind of runs on... I mean, we're the advancements of everything. Right. right. That's true. Technology too, right? Yeah. VR and everything. Like the... Um, Sex dolls. I just did. Uh, I just did did VR and had had boobs. Like uh, like like porn will one day free us from everything. Like um, uh, it will advance us in, in ways we didn't know. I was like, oh, that's a that's a nice boobs. Like, and they're mine. Yeah, I mean, I just had this one sex toy that was molded after me that will now be able to. Like it'll have memory of like what makes you ejaculate. Oh, oh God! And yeah, it's supposed to be called the perfect fuck, and it'll know. It'll also be self lubricating. It'll like. This it's, sounds like a, the cold open of, like, a, of a dystopian. Yeah. So, this is like the Ed Two Hundred Nine. Like, a, it's a, ladies you and gentlemen, you no longer have to get married. So. See, they, they, they tried to make one a uh, sex toy based on me, but the shipping costs were too big. All right. Um. It just, thank you. Eat those chocolates, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. So, por so Pornhub is mainstreamifying, and the, the you know it's making it's making making us maybe hopefully relax about porn a little bit. Um, it's also helping self starters. It's like, but it, it might also be it. You have to like. Yeah, I mean, I have to contact them constantly to remove scenes that are up on my website. Cause right. Like, one thing I do super exclusively is anal. Like, I only do that for myself and one other company. So they'll take my own anal scenes from my own website. So I have to, like, email them and be like, hey, take down my pizza delivery girl anal scene. Like, like that's special. That's my only gangbang that exists <laughs> online, and it's, like, exclusively at my website. Do you talk? I saw the thumbnail for that one. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so, which means I was like, I was like, it was like, it shouldn't have been there. The do you this I I feel the, like I I I wanted to say this but it's like I don't know if you hear this all the time and if this makes you happy or sad or what the, your reaction to this is but fuck it I'll just like like my girlfriend and I watch porn together we've seen you a thousand times in different things and then we met you and now we it's like both of us individually and as a couple like we don't like we don't click at you Aww, anymore sad. sad face what is that that's because we're bad people right because <laughs> I think it's also I think it's also just American society the way it kind of like has portrayed us to be and like the way that the standards are of like you don't fuck your friends right or, you know that's like cheating. and it's also just like like oh the, there's a threshold you have to go through everything has to be about taboo yeah and then like I'm not a fantasy now I'm like this tangible thing in order for my like, girlfriend and I to enjoy watching porn together we have to uh, we have to have this unspoken agreement that we're doing something base crass animalistic together. And so then we meet you, and you're like, "Hi, my, you know, like, 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 can I borrow a cup of sugar or whatever?" And 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 uh, I'm 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 afraid Trump's gonna get elected too. And look, there's Game of Thrones people, and and it's like, and and then and then yeah, and it's like, I, I guess it's just the it is that's that that sort of typifies that 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 border, which I don't think will like, but it doesn't it doesn't bum you out like like it doesn't make you it's not like I'm uh, really sad that you and your girlfriend aren't banging watching my porn anymore. <laughs> We usually just watch and then we end up like uh, touching ourselves on each other. We don't like we don't like put the laptop open and then we're, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're both watching. And, Do you want to try that? No. Um, 
But uh, what out of all these categories? Then we get to the I wanted the Prop sixty thing. But out of all that, there's all the categories. It's so funny how porn is so like like it's the the internet how it's like regimented sexuality. But that also I think is a step towards. It's like you can you can mark your your transition if you were to become curious about bisexuality you could like drift in categories and tag clouds and things and you can kind of like it's more supervisable and curatable by the person's own discretion but um what are these categories that all exist like are there ones that are your favorites not because they cause or maybe it's because they cause the most pleasure or maybe it's because they're the easiest for the most money or whatever like what are if your agent calls and says i got a boom 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 and a boom 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 like 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 wh- which one makes you go fucking sweet like, like like i want more of those uh well i definitely love like blowjob scenes because usually those are like in and out in two hours and so that's like really nice um quick i mean it's not all too <laughs> There's a lot of prep time. Yeah, I mean, there's like, you know, an an hour's worth of makeup, you know, in the makeup chair kind of a thing. I knew those dicks were fake. (laughs) They're impossible. Um, So it's like, and there's a lot of porn that's just straight up blowjobs. Yeah, there's like certain scenes that I hate working for, which like, I mean, Reality Kings is like, I love them, but I also hate because a lot of their stuff is like, they're not even shooting sex the whole time. They're shooting ad shots, which are like, you know, those little gifts on the side of Pornhub, basically, that Mm -hmm. is like, you know, the obvious fucking, even though like, you can see over the counter, but you're, you know, it's supposed to be like relative. So like that guy technically doesn't see, even though he's like under the desk eating her pussy or whatever the fuck. Yeah. So like, there's like, a lot of that where we'll spend so much time just shooting like these ad based shots where it's just like over and over like these 30 second clips and they're like want so many of them and it's like we're not even doing sex things or you know you and, or I like I hate VR porn because like that's <laughs> like I'm supposed to be like making out with the camera so like now I'm like having sex with like a camera like like literally if this is the camera they want me to go <laughs> I saw. I did a, saw a VR one. I just got my Vive system, so I saw a VR one with you. And it, it's you. You're a bridesmaid with another. Oh yeah, Mia Malkova. And then, and then <laughs> all, all VR porn right now is just it's just a point of view video. Of sometimes, yeah, it's like sometimes POV. The guy, well, no, all the time the guy's like legs and dick are are just uh, like below frame, and then there's just like women coming in and going, "What are you doing?" <laughs> What, do you think that dick uh, is important? All right, let's see what's going on. This, uh, this, uh, because the guy can't do anything or you'll get seasick. Like, he can't, like, get up and start... Uh, uh, the, um... There, 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 it's, it's, it's dangerous. Like, there's, like these cameras aren't expensive, and a lot of amateur pornographers are g- grabbing them and going, "Let's make a VR porn." You put on the helmet, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Hold- Oops. <laughs> That was the that was the new glass that Jane kickstarted for me and <laughs> no uh, tell me now no 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 Jesus Christ um, <laughs> R- R- Riley do you do you watch porn is porn is there is a porn that oh, you consume oh that's a good question he's a he's a good interviewer now <laughs> I never would have thought to answer that it was like like you, your therapist has a therapist yeah uh, I I only watch anime porn anime uh, porn yeah so awesome. like that's that's what I like to, which is what I used to like before porn I didn't like watching boy on girl sex to me like the penis on camera kind of looked weird so I would watch lesbian sex or anime right. porn what's that, the what's the allure of anime porn for you uh, I think that it's just like ultimately super fantasy, and also now that I know most of the performers, it kind of makes it different. So is I'll it because watch... you're too critical? Because I, I can only watch British comedy. Yeah, I mean, so, I think so, and like sometimes even that doesn't do it for me. Sometimes I just have to look at pictures, right. and it's like just the picture alone is enough because I can create my whole own imaginary entity. Yeah, exactly. I can't watch it. New Girl because I'm like I know Heather, uh, 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 Heather uh, 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 Mary. Weather. I don't know her. Obviously, I don't know her fucking name. Uh, Liz Merriweather and, and I'm like, like I've met her and, and I respect her and uh, she, she she and then I, so I can't watch I can't watch New Girl because like if they if they do a, a joke and then it goes to commercial I'm like that's an act break and then I'm like you're a dick and like like <laughs> like it's like like it's too much it's too I spend too much time all day obsessing over these things I can't just watch like Parks and Rec like usually and like without like being drawn into conflicting 
voices in my head. Well, yeah, and, and if I'm with a girlfriend or something, they, they they inevitably just get the impression that I'm like this fucking asshole. So, like, yeah, it, like I'm super picky about my blowjobs. So if the if so I if you're watching a bad girl... blowjob, if Faye Reagan is like hacking it up on the yeah, <laughs> no, I know if you're like just if you're just making the sounds and I'm just like you're not even doing anything. Like I'm just so yeah. I'm... Now, R- Riley or any, anybody here has anybody done porn star karaoke at Sardo's? Up in the valley? No? There, there is a karaoke place. In the, There's in a the, hand being raised over there. Oh, yeah? You, you've done it? We, we, we have done porn star karaoke. We are not porn stars, but we have done it. Right. Is it monthly or weekly, or what is it? Weekly. Weekly. Um, yeah, I, I went there once. Sardo's is like on pass, right? Yeah. In, in Burbank. Like, like, your first date. Our first date. Wow. You, you know how to treat a lady. I love that. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, <laughs> That's my wife. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I, I just moved to the Catskills. Uh, uh, near Warner Brothers, there's a place called Sardos. They do karaoke, but weekly there is porn star karaoke. And I went there once, did not know that. My friends invited me, and it was, I was like, what the fuck? That's Stephanie Swift. Like, that's somebody like, I, like, I knew. Like, and like, there's people that like, you kind of vaguely recognize because, you know, I, I'm, I've, I've seen porn. And they get up there. Here's the thing about porn star karaoke. Competitive as shit. <laughs> They're not having fun. They're actually trying to win karaoke. Right. And on the tables at Sardo's, uh, this is true, there's little slips of paper. Where, and this, I haven't been there. This has got to be eight years ago or, or so. Little slips of paper on each table that said, uh, hey, respect our neighbors. Don't fuck on their lawns or in their backyards. <laughs> Because apparently the porn stars were getting out, like, like doing karaoke and then banging on their nearby like, private property. And they actually had I can't to. I believe them, he did devil in blue jeans. <laughs> he knows that's mine. Yes, I do black velvet. They have to be uptight about something, so they funnel it into like something yeah. that's. Uh, so, all right, so Prop 60, let's talk about that. Because like, the debates are tonight, some of them are DVRing. Like, like, California voters are going to go in, you're going to be standing in your neighbor's garage or at some elementary school, and then this fucking thing is dropped on you without warning. It's like you have to have an opinion about condoms and porn and all this stuff. So, we already had the whatever the prop was, and that went through, right? So, there was like a condom law. Yeah, there's Measure B, which already went through, which by technically we're supposed to use condoms when we're shooting porn. But there's like no penalty if we don't, so nobody even does. So I'm going to describe an ad to you that I saw tonight because, and then you, like, let's get your perspective on this because it's very, from talking to you, a very deceptive ad. There's a woman on camera and she looks very sad. And uh, uh, if her, I assume her story's true, so she should be sad, but she's like, I. I, there's loopholes in the condom law, and people take them, and we need we need a law that prevents the loopholes too. And I'm an adult film actress, and I got AIDS from doing a, a adult film and all this stuff, and it's 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 very sad, and it seems very serious, and it leaves you with the choice between not caring about someone's life and like voting for this law. Now you tell me how many how many people have gotten AIDS from doing porn in the last decade? Well. There hasn't been anybody who's contracted actual HIV from porn for the last 11 years. So this whole condom law is very misleading or in the way that they try to sell it as trying to prevent HIV or other STI, STDs. And I myself, I've been shooting for five years and I've never contracted gonorrhea or chlamydia or any... And those uh, are actually... like These are very common. If you had, it would be like... Yeah, workplace. Yeah, hazard. I mean, it's exactly. It's very common. It <laughs> like, happens a lot in the but industry. But you haven't even. Even I myself. movies. In, for in five years, I have never contracted an STD. So, and I personally, the regulation now to date is every twelve days we get tested. It was prior. I think it, it's either in a, been a year or two that it's been fourteen days, but prior it was every thirty days, and we all collectively agreed we're like oh we feel like we should be you know to if we because we were having a couple like scares like we have false positives that come up and then you know there's a whole like uh, I can't think of the word but you know when they collectively get everybody together and they're like okay you guys are possibly you know you right. possibly have a uh, triage or what's it well, or, like or uh, they, uh, uh, quarantine yeah there we go like a quarantine kind of a thing so they'll like get these people but 
even in all the scares, like it's been 11 years since anybody has actually contracted. I mean, that's a from. lot of penises and going the, into a lot of holes. And the people who did back when there was, it was people who do like anal cream pies, where the girls who got a, uh, AIDS, HIV. So like even with my within my in- industry or my agency, none of us do anal cream pies uh, because that was the like other girls who worked with the same performers who did anal sex or regular cream pies they didn't contract the disease as opposed to the girls who shot like anal cream pies they were able to contract the disease uh, so. so so we have pre-condom despite what you might think about the condom law that's already been voted in and which isn't up for being repealed we're not voting for that this is like a big piece of like duct tape and then some that someone wants to put over the existing condom laws yes um, the existing condom laws are already there and from what you're saying, before that condom law existed, this shit was being self-policed by your industry. Yes, it's not legally, it's not by legal rights that we have to be tested. It's not like, you know, like when we shoot and they film us, they're like, hey, are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Are you 18? Are you here under your own free will? There's never a question saying, are you tested and are you clean? Like, so there is no like legal standard on this, but this is an industry standard that we've developed to be tested every 12 to 14 days and now they want to like legally come in and demand that we wear pornos and if it's not shown in every single frame of the porno that is you know being out there that now any civilian can now sue us for 25 percent of the makings of this film or something along the lines i can't i'm not totally sure with uh, like with the whole thing um, um, it's like, yeah. So, so just to repeat that, and maybe that, like, like, yeah. If the condom isn't in every frame, which just imagine, I don't as know a how porn they editor, even do it. Like, in what every a terrible frame. porn movie! Like, my favorite shots are the master shots. First of all, like, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the of the uh, point of entry, like, like close ups. Like, I like the I like the far away stuff. If there's a condom net visible, forget about that. Like, like the like, what what, what is the agenda behind this? Personally, what I take the agenda is that they want to move porn out of California. Do they want to um, move it somewhere else, or do they just want just, California cleaner? I think they want California out, like the porn industry out, because even in the way that they, if you guys like check out your, you know, voters' ballot, you, you know, check out your shit here, and you actually read on Prop 60. It's really misleading because all it basically is telling you that it's like let's stop spreading, you know, STDs in the adult industry and bringing it into the broader community. Like it's making it sound like we come in we're like f- jizzing all over you guys and giving you AIDS and shit, which is not a nearly like I said it hasn't been 11 years. It's been 11 years since we've had any contracted In spite diseases. of people shunting you off into an, an, a relatively unregulated industry. It's yes, like, it's, and then it's, it's also it's, bringing this guy, Michael Weinstein, who is like the founder of AIDS Healthcare Foundation or something like that. It makes him now, he's going to be like inducted into like this legislation where he will now oversee all of porn and kind of like control all of porn in California. And I mean, this guy has also spent over $1.8 a million dollars of the AIDS Healthcare Foundation just on trying to get this, you know, uh, bill in act. And, and what, what's his angle? Like, what? How does he profit? Or the, like? Well, he'll be getting paid by taxpayers' dollars once he is. Uh, you a, said that, like, like the the money that went into this, like. The reason there's a commercial tonight during the debates, there can't, there won't be another commercial because the porn industry would have to use its blowjob money to like make yeah. a national I mean, airtime no, spot. There's no way that we can compete with that. These you know? people use AIDS research money. Yes, which should be going to better you to, know, to to make helping AIDS actual fight cancer. people. Yeah, like it, it should go to that stuff you were talking about earlier with yeah. the leukemia and shit. Yeah, that shit. Fucking <laughs> get that fucking cancer out of the goddamn piece of shit. Kids, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, that, I want that. to see an AIDS versus cancer movie, like, like <laughs> Predator versus. Uh, what, what, what? Michael, if nothing else, Michael just do, do, do the research because you're a California voter and you're going to be like, it's, it just gets dropped in your lap. And it's yeah, like, like the it's... key points here being, you're not, you're if you vote no on Prop 60, the only thing that 
you're affecting is just you're stopping. Well, no, you want to vote no on Prop. No, that's what I'm saying. If you vote no on Prop 60, you're not making any dramatic decisions about the course of people's lives, except that you're just like saying, yeah, like 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 there's someone that's trying to do that. There's somebody that's trying to change things, yeah, and they're not make they're not changing things to make there be less AIDS among porn stars or the community because that's not an issue. They're lying about that. They're misleading you about that. So a a vote no on Prop 60 means what exactly? Or can I, can I say a quick thing? I'm sorry to interrupt everyone. No, yeah. Um, real quick, I don't need to go off on stage. Um, Prop 60 would allow me to sue Riley for the amount of money that she spent on Prop 60. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
yeah, we just wanted to be able to, to talk with you and the fact that we've had all these different experiences that um, I don't know if a lot of your fans kind of, you know, the nerdier type people don't tend to be in the military, so. Right. <laughs> what, what was your MOS in the Army? Pretty nerdy one. Um, I was a 46 Romeo, which is a broadcaster, so I, uh, I shot video and stuff, but I was in an infantry unit and went with them to Iraq and you, Afghanistan. You were an Army nerd. I love that. Yep. <laughs> Oh, 46 about, Romeo, I love it. What about you, Lee? I eat tanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm an engineer, so like basically demolition, construction, C4, shit like that. So what? So, so but you? I mean, your video. Maybe I'm maybe I'm gilding the lily. I don't know. I thought your video was like you kind of like. Am I putting words in your mouth and saying? I'd like to talk to my little brother. Like I'd like to kind of talk him out of serving. <laughs> oh no, he, that's I don't think necessary. I need to. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost done, and then I'm yeah. home free. I, was, I thought. Here, well, here's meaning what I thought sorry, when I saw I'm that sorry. video. Hang on, Dan. Uh, meaning what? You're 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 gonna? Yeah, I got like a uh, uh, eleven months left, and then I'm getting out and moving back to Florida and hanging out. And, and then retiring or? No, I'll. Uh, I'm, I haven't been in long enough to like officially retire and get like pension and stuff like that. But uh, I'll use the GI Bill. I want to go to school for music, and so I'll go do that in awesome. Florida and hang out. Yeah, well done. Uh, yeah, the two the two things that hit my mind were like, well, number one, this is a pretty contractual issue. I think you're in it until you're out of it, and uh, number two, correct me if I'm wrong, but if your brother's enough of a sociopath that a podcast would convince him to, to uh, not risk his life or risk his life, then maybe he's the kind of uh, heartless killing machine we need in the armed services. I mean, like, like that's, where we, that's where we want people that are like, like, uh, that programmable uh, and, and deadly. Um, who has a better uh, ua or ura? <laughs> ura. Who uh, doesn't make any sense? You just say it. It's not a real sound. It's not, what, cause I you're, never really could do a good who. <laughs> All right, that, that that was my answer. <laughs> Neither. So your experience, Lee, has been a lot easier than your older brother's. I mean, you 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 say you, the same training and. Uh, and all this stuff, but you're you're coming up in 11 months on your you'll you'll go home and you got training, you got the GI Bill, uh, Alex. You 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 were in the shit, albeit uh, a nerd in the shit. You had a you were you were Which shooting you were shooting worse, the shit. Probably uh, is it worse? Is it it's, like what's that? You're experience? you're more isolated. Um, definitely, you know you can't bro out with all the with all the the meatheads out there. You know you're those guys, those hurt locker isolated. guys have all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> wrestling each other because they, they have to have an intimate relationship with death. Alex, well, where were you stationed? I was stationed at um, Fort Campbell in Kentucky, the 101st Air, uh, Airborne Division, but went to Iraq for a year um, in East Baghdad, Sadr City, and then Iraq, uh, Afghanistan for a year in East Afghanistan. So when you're doing what you did out there, like where physically like are you? Like, like what, what's, your, what's your home base? Like um, I, it's called a forward operating base or FOB. That's where we lived. And um, in Iraq, it was the old uh, Ministry of Intelligence, I think, like Saddam Hussein's Ministry of Intelligence that we kind of just moved into. So it's like big old cement buildings. And then in Afghanistan, it was just kind of a camp that we set up with tents on gravel. And but you know, I'd go out on patrols and missions and stuff like that with the guys to shoot videos. Lee, what, what would it mean right now like if, if you got sent out? Like wh- where we are, like as the U.S. right now, if, if a marine if Trump g- invaded Mexico, <laughs> <laughs> if a marine got sent out to the desert right now, or, or, I, mean, I don't know, do, are, they, are they still deploying marines out there? Uh, yeah, the uh, right now it's kind of a peacetime Marine Corps. Uh, they're basically making moves like uh, we do Muse Marine. Uh, something fucking it's an acronym uh you go on a boat you go on a boat and you visit asian countries and you like show your force around the world and like uh, that sounds nice and i have some buddies that are in like uh lithuania and shit just showing that we exist but uh for the most part we're just doing like uh peacetime like uh building hearts and minds missions and stuff like that so if i went anywhere right now it'd probably be a pretty uneventful deployment just Sometimes Hanging you have to do photo drunk. ops where you hand a blanket to a hurricane survivor. Yeah, exactly. I was the photographer that did those photo ops. <laughs> yeah, but at, at, at your age, Lee, like let's say you were deployed overseas and you were an active Marine, like, the, anything could happen right now. Like, like, like some, some serious shit could go down. Like you could be 
Like, yeah, you, yeah. You, you'd be thrust right, right in there. Yeah, that's uh, actually that's uh, like so. Super recently, a uh, deployment opportunity has come up for next year sometime, and it's a six month deployment. And but by the time it ends, I'll have supposed to have been out of the Marine Corps for one month, so I can do a six month extension to go on the deployment or not go and get out uh, early. And it's like with my luck, I'll lose my legs or something. Or I could go and do that and like take the gamble. So like, what, what, what's what's the uh, what's the upside for you? Like, like a, a bigger pension or? Well, it's uh, it's total brainwashing too because like uh, I uh, I haven't been deployed or anything like that, and we live in a like me everyday life is around all these people who are like oh yeah I was there for the initial push in Fallujah or whatever. So like, I'm at a lower status than them based off my experience in the military. So, like, you have that just ingrained into you since day one that you want to go out and do things and stuff like that. But then you also get, like, you don't pay taxes for the time that you're deployed. You get, like, combat pay. You get, yeah, but like, you, can, you, can, you can do that by losing a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get that deal. You don't even have to be in a tent. Sorry, I cut you off. No, 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 you're... <laughs> I, I got to. I, I was very lucky. That I got to go like perform like for some USO uh, shows, like for Marines and uh, Army and some air bases, and uh, we also got to go to some uh, Bethesda and Walter Reed, like the hospitals for the where most of the Marine, the wounded Marines are at, and it was fucking crazy, man. Like 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 that's everybody's blown to bits, and and it, some of the nicest like coolest people you ever met like but like like it's just, like it's it's nuts yeah and what just like people getting blown to bits like i uh i obviously have never seen it firsthand but i work with people and i'm around people so often that have uh had that like right now i actually got tasked out so i just check ids at the gate and i'm like welcome to camp pendleton have a nice day but uh there's this old dude who calls himself agent whitehead and he has like <laughs> He has a retired military ID, so we have to let him on base. But he's always, like, saying that he can, like, mind control people and stuff like that. And he has, like, two prosthetic <laughs> legs. But, like, and he's a Vietnam vet. So, like, like that dude got messed up. Fucking. <laughs> like, that dude. Uh, what do you, where are you guys at? at? <laughs> Wait, I want to know a lot more about Agent Whitehead. <laughs> That's classified. Can we can, can we get him on the show? Uh, for all we know, he's in. Yeah, he, he's in the back right now, yeah. watching us through yes. through yes. night vision goggles. And uh, where are you guys at politically? I mean, like, 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 there's been this tradition. Like, I, you know, you, oh, I'm a Republican, so I'm into war and strong armed forces and defense and all that stuff. But it's like Truman was a Democrat and he was a civil rights uh, 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 advocate and uh, and dropped the bomb on on. On Hiroshima and and, and, um, and Nagasaki, that why, why that, like, like, like get the other one right, Dan. Um, the the Suzuki maybe. The, 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 these words have changed so much. Like politically, though, like like from you guys span a couple years now in the armed services. Like the guys and gals around you are they are they right wing like to the they're max? mostly right wing to the max. And yeah. are they pretty like kind of like like. Do they say like like cr shit that makes you like crazy? Do well, you uh, one thing I find a lot in the like I'm I'm as left as you can get, just about uh, slightly less than him maybe, but uh, like one thing I find is like yeah Trump sucks, but <laughs> right and that and that and that shrug is like there's the world in that shrug. <laughs> It's like I mean I but, grab women by the pussy too. I'm like what do you want? <laughs> because our forefathers did. Uh, uh, the, the the yeah I mean well so how do you reconcile uh, being politically liberal? Do you do you disguise yourself when you're if you're surrounded you're in a because I imagine there's right wing people in Hollywood that kind of like. They probably feel a little clammed up, like like they don't want to alienate themselves. It could cost them money. It could cost them livelihood. Um, uh, I don't know how many. It just doesn't go with the territory. But then again, they they must exist. So what do you guys do when you're in a tent or a <laughs> barracks or some army term, uh, military term, and and, and, and people say something space. like 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 like, do you engage and go like, no, I'm gonna change your hearts and minds, uh, like. Uh, I can't speak for him, but uh, I personally am like, let me tell you why you're wrong. 
And then I go into a spiel, and I'm like, I'm the only liberal Marine ever. I'm great. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, I, was, I uh, definitely stayed more quiet when I was in the Army. And this was, like, I deployed to Iraq in 2003, so it was pretty recent after 9-11, and everyone was kind of, like, ramped up to go over there and right. kill people. What, what was so. your unit? I was in the 506th Inf- Infantry Regiment in the 101st Airborne Division, which is actually technically the Band of Brothers guys from the oh, really? uh, HBO thing. Like, we, we did our USO shows. We did shows for like um, NATO, like doctors, and so like you, you do comedy for them. Like you, you can reference Voltaire, and like they, they dig it. We also did uh, a show for the Big Red One, which is straight up infantry mm-hmm. grunts, and they were just like proud. You know, murderers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were and, and, and they were great fun. But the, but like the, the, their job is to go in there and like different the, audience. Their tip of the their tip of the spear. And the, uh, if if you didn't do a joke about blowing shit up or fucking and sucking, they weren't digging it. <laughs> I imagine you have to get to that space in order to. I mean, your job if you're going to do it well, or even if you're not invested in doing it well, but you're only invested in maintaining your sanity. You obviously. I mean, that's the definition of a soldier, right? You have to, you have to leave your humanity at the door. You have to become a machine uh, because, you, because the hierarchy and everything, it's like reliant. Even That's the weird thing about this country is that we act like there's this like left and right hand, but it's like the lefties in our country argue that we need thicker body, body armor. Like, like, like there's a, we're a, we're Goddamn a, we're, ambidextrous is what they are. <laughs> we're, a, we're, a, we're, a, we're a right of center empire. Why wouldn't you be right of center if you were an empire? Uh, you would be conservative because you'd like things to be the way they were yesterday more so than for, to have them change. And it's our behavior that would indicate that. We, we, are a, we, are, we, 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 we have people in our country that vote and pay taxes and, 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 and speak very loudly about how incredibly left we are. But when we measure our country as a collective and observe our behavior, we, we, we are – we are full on into into blowing shit up. We're full on into occupying spaces, influencing uh, democracy uh, ac- across the globe, depending on our interests. Like we are, we're down to fuck. Uh, <laughs> and so, what is my point? Well, um, well let I, me just uh, say, I didn't. I don't think I mentioned this in the little video, but um, oh, I guess. Well, oh, I guess my point was just that if I got drafted, if I was, if I was not forty three, and didn't, I wouldn't immediately have a million reasons why I couldn't. But it, like, like I would, I would absolutely. I mean, like I, you know. There's only one path. Like you would have to go. Like okay, yes, yes. Like I, like I, I, I surrender all of my critical thinking because otherwise I'm gonna keep fucking up and I could, I could, I could hurt somebody. I could, nope. I could fuck ev- something up for everybody if I'm not, if I'm not, if I don't just put blinders on and just like, like, like I gotta just like I wouldn't be capable of doing it successfully. But like, like that would be my choice. That's that's uh, for me. That's a shitty thing. It's like the more you think, the stupider you are. Like uh, if. If someone is like, hey, you fucked up, so you got to go do lunges up and down a hallway for five hours or whatever, you're like, okay, I'm going to go do lunges for no reason, and I'll think about something else. Like, there's no, there's no opportunity as a lower-ranking person to be like, I'm smarter than my leader. I have a better frame of mind than him, a better like uh, geopolitical understanding of the situation than him or her. Uh, so I'm going to make this decision. Yeah, I don't even want that in my editor. You know, like on a on a sitcom that will that will cost money and 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 make us a worse television. Show. R- Riley, like, like, like you need blind loyalty. Uh, I'm sorry, R- R- Riley. Do, do, do people in the porn industry ever get asked to go to USO shows? Like, they, they go perform with the troops? Uh, I mean, I get asked to the military ball once a week, but right. <laughs> <laughs> like like like, you know, like like people go out and perform. Like, like the, the, the troops would flip if you came out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I don't personally go and perform like sex shows and no, stuff. No, no, no. I mean, like, just, I, I, I'm not no, saying, I'm saying you would... get on stage and do, and 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 do like porn. I'm saying like, like if you went out there and just like like shook hands and said hello and like and met people, Pro- they'd freak out. That Probably be... a lot of the locals would be pretty upset about it, to be honest. The locals. Like in a in Iraq and Afghanistan, they're Muslim countries, so porn was oh, yeah, not allowed yeah, yeah. at all in the military. Right. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, every I, I'm sure I first saw. Uh, oh, Mr. I, I've here sent from, many from porn. a war zone. Yeah. yeah, I've sent many. I've I send care packages to guys in the army very often. So. Well, uh, all right. So what, what is in that care package, Riley? Right 
my panties. Chocolate candies. <laughs> so your service to our country and your love of your brother has gotten you up here. We're very, we're very uh, fascinated to hear from you. You're, you're a good egg. Like, like, like what do you, what do you want to do with this opportunity? Do you, is there any albums to plug or any, uh, any, any props? If you, if you're yes on sixty, you know, let's hear your counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or what? Yeah, anything you want to say? No, I don't think we have any plugs. We just wanted to be able to chat with you. And uh... is there anything when you're listening to the podcast that you're like, "Well, geez, none of these people on stage or listening are in military service." If if they knew what we knew, maybe is there is there anything that you've heard heard us express that you're like, "Well, come on." <laughs> I've got a few. <laughs> I'll read it on Jeff's Twitter later. <laughs> well, but, so, but are you saying, Lee, that Alex has talked you out of going into active service? Like you- oh, no, 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 no. Like, uh, so I have a daughter, and she was born when I was 18. And I was like, well, I'm not going to finish college, so I'm going to join the military and have a life that way. And so that's why I joined. And then I was like, I was already super liberal and shit like that before that. And, uh, uh, I, yeah, I'm ready to get out. That's and, all. and I think it adds to the story a little bit that our dad is a uh, career military army officer. And so we spent our lives as kids moving around every two years around the world. And uh, our parents are very conservative. Um, so we, we definitely grew up in that world and, you know, had to figure was out. Was it like a great life. Santini thing? Was he a hardcore dude? or, is it, or? Uh, I used to, I don't know if you know what parade rest is, but when my dad was angry at me, that's how I stood in front of him. Which is a military position of attention. What is that exactly? <laughs> feet and for how long? Feet shoulder width apart, hands behind your back. Whenever he was done. Really? Like wait, what would and be? And then the- I'd get beat, and then I'd go to bed. And <laughs> lesson learned. <laughs> Fuck you, no. Spare the rod. <laughs> Uh, well, like, here's, here's like, when I went to these shows and I met these officers and I met these enlisted men and women, uh, they were like, "Hey, Jeff, you should really, uh, you, should, you, you ever think about being an officer?" I'm like, "No, like, I, I hate." You're too being, smart. You're I too hate, smart, I Jeff. I hate being told what to do. Like, yeah, but all officers hate being told what to do. It's like, yeah, but I would be in jail the whole time <laughs> because I, like, I, I don't like all these fucking rules. I'm like, yeah, that's what all great generals say. I'm like, you're freaking me out. Like, I'm fucking <laughs> stop it. Something I've never understood. It, 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 maybe you guys can clarify this. If you're nerds and you're in the military, like, like, and you've experienced this, like, it, am I mistaken in assuming that no matter who's been president through the span of our country's history, there's never been like a dramatic like? I I know that Republicans are better at starting w- entire wars, like, like, and I guess that's better for the military but i don't think you guys think like that when you're in that line of work i don't think you're like like firemen don't go oh this guy's pro fire like i i want him to be my candidate oh, no. like like you're firemen your, your your job is to put out wars i mean it's like 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 and, and in other words like like it's not like it's like a jackpot like the like, it you, you yeah is, is your average average marine or your average ar- army soldier like are, are they gung-ho and like they, they, they want to kill motherfuckers they, they want war. they are yeah. gonna vote for whoever is most likely to start the next war but it's because of their ideology right it's not because of anything practical where it's like hillary clinton from my I, as far as i know just like obama before her bill clinton like 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 these aren't these aren't people who reduce the amount of fucking up people we do are they no they are like like the, the defense budget stays the same and increases at the rate that it increases correct I, I think the only president that hasn't declared war was like carter i think like like like, like every democrat that except for him maybe has as has, has it's almost like the war. president doesn't matter at all except when he's a fucking lunatic that well, like can actually I don't think we would have invaded Iraq if if Al Gore had been president. That's like the classic <laughs> example. You can't just We'd you can't all be picture that happening. If Al Gore was president, it'd <laughs> be great. Um, the but 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 you spent your military career and got your GI Bill paid. You, you've been at Camp Pendleton. You haven't been stationed in a country that we're occupying or fighting. It, our defense budget continues to just, it's more important yeah, than and education. That, that shit better fucking pay for my college or I'm going to be <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 but we have bad news for you. While you've been gone, we've made your college education worthless. Uh, uh, enjoy it. Enjoy your degree in fucking whatever. But uh, uh, it, 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 that, 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 because we d- haven't valued uh, uh, education as much as we have defense. And for that reason, it just it kind of confuses me when I see like video footage of like 
you know, rooms full of, of, of hardworking men and women that are salt of the earth that grew up in lower middle class uh, neighborhoods and who volunteered or, or it, for, for military service who are like so invested in who becomes commander in chief of our military. And it's like, you don't think Obama is going to like, like, like be a boon to your industry? Uh, well, like, I was in Afghanistan when Obama was inaugurated, and it was like a funeral out there. Everyone was – Because just, they think he's going to what? You know, like pull back not, from all Muslim countries. I'm a secret Muslim, and I hate – I am sick I hate of killing brown up, people. And, like, like even if he did pull everybody back, he'd assign you to the attorney general's office so you could go raid dispensaries. Like, like, like <laughs> there's always work for a hypocritical politician to, to assign uh, people who know how to kill well, people. A- Alex, what you said is a funeral. What, what, what was the – mood on base um everyone was just uh disappointed distraught like just thought it was the worst thing that could happen to our country that he didn't really love america you know saying obama it's one letter away from osama like and really meaning it his middle name is saddam <laughs> hussein <laughs> not to <Saddam>. same shit <laughs> So we don't want to think that about our military. Like I, w- I want to think of them and police as like people who are so close to the action and that they know the nuts and bolts that there would be a culture shock in a conversation with them and the politics would be different, but it would be because of – of real things, it wouldn't be because of hypnotism. Like, 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 for somebody who actually has to be the one whose hand is on the on the lever or finger on the trigger, um, for, I would expect them. I would grant them the right to be so hardcore right wing because of their real basic like fundamental philosophy and the risks that they take and stuff but it's disappointing to hear that it's more like yeah as in the trailer park so in the military they watch like they watch fox news in the in the uh where you eat? They, they just because they, yeah. it's like it's almost like that, that makes the job separate from the ideology. That it's like well the job is to have to deal with the repercussions of how we think but like we're we don't like they're just thinking the same you have shit. To, that you have to think that way to be to, happy doing that, right? Like, yeah, but I, yeah, and I'm, try, I'm trying to balance it because I'm like, I don't get it. Like, I feel like if I'm, I'm a soldier and Obama gets elected, I'm like, that dude's gonna but, blow up shit like nobody's business because he's like, a Democrat. The the uh, I think you just barely touched on it, maybe, but like like the whole Colin Kaepernick uh, kneeling for the flag uh, national anthem and shit like that. People are like, he hates the troops, but it's. More like, why does disagreeing with uh, certain things America has a trend for standing for mean that you don't appreciate the people that go and fight for the things that you do happen to stand for? Exactly. Like, it doesn't. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> and and you know, there's there's liberal nerds in the military, and there's there's all all different stripes in the military. There's definitely that mainstream right wing go kill Muslims culture, but. I don't want to shit all over everyone. You know, I met other nerds there and other yeah. bright people that. Well, that's the, that's the conflict that we're in. That's the last thing we want to do. But, like, you know, that is a thing. Like, it's like that also gets taken advantage of. In the 90s, we developed this phrase, support our troops. Like, like we, 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 we we're like, uh, because we, we figured out that, like, like, oh, who the hell can't support our troops? What are you, a monster? You're talking about young men and women like risking their lives for our country, but it was like if it wasn't support our troops, it would be support the war. And it's easy to not support a war. It's impossible to not support the troops. And so that's an abusable ideology. It's like, 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 and so we, it, it was at stateside, when we get reminded of the fact that like, oh, in Vietnam, and then these poor kids came home and we spit on them because we confused them with the people that sent them there. We're never going to make that mistake again. But that growth on our part was absolutely abused by a war machine that that, that, that told us, yeah, don't do that ever, anymore, ever again, and no news coverage, and blah, 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 support our troops. And it was like, it was fu- it was used for fucked up purposes. And like, like, so we sit over here and we go like, I don't even know what to fucking, like, like how to treat veterans you know it's like except to say and then you get this like empire where we just go like well i'm liberal so i want these guys who lost their arms and legs to be taken care of i want them to have uh, better armor on their humvees when they're patrolling the areas we i keep on like well, i'm a liberal what uh, like 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 yeah all right well, okay um how do you guys feel about porn when you're not in afghanistan you like it you you <laughs> I'm a fan. A plus. Now, uh, Riley, uh, here's a, maybe a little too intimate a question to ask you. But uh, what, uh, when you like, are you a waxer, a shaver? How do you do it? I know where this is going. I personally shave, but I do plan on getting like laser hair removal at some point. Now, Riley, do you know that you don't need to choose between price and quality? <laughs> Tell 
to get an amazing affordable shave. DollarShaveClub.com is the answer. They support the troops. They support the troops. And also, if you don't like it, you get your first month free at Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> Dollar Ladies Shave Club. grow your bush. You go, uh, did, <laughs> Riley, did you know if you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Harmontown, you'll get a discount of some kind? <laughs> They'll actually come over and shave you. A, a, a representative from Dollar Shave Club comes over and just gives your genitals the perfect shave. Seriously, I have no reason to deal with the drugstore hassle and the battle... And battle the locked up Razor Fortress ever again. What are we, Dan, what are we doing? What is our fucking show? I've never seen a nickel from any of these things. But I, we've, we, we sell underwear and razors, and I've never seen fucking three dollars. Jeff, I agree. It's insane that we've created a dichotomy between quality and price. <laughs> Especially with shaving equipment, like why why can't the top notch shaving uh, accoutrement also be the cheapest? Are you saying that I should simply go, I should simply go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Harmontown and pick a razor that works for me from their lineup of amazing blades? Jeff, I can't control you. <laughs> It, sa- it, it sounds like you're trying to tell me what to do. I can only like. I like, don't want to be told what to do. Like our great guest tonight, I can only share my experience with you. Riley Reed's done 437 movies and, and doesn't have AIDS. That that says that says no on Prop 60 to me. But it the, sounds, the, the it, Cook brothers say uh, 11 months and out, and I'd like to use my GI Bill. That says uh, that says uh, vote Democrat to me. Uh, but but don't be fooled and think that they're not also hawks. Uh, 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 and all I can tell you from my experience is that I get a first class shave when I use the executive blade. You have a beard. You have a full beard. This my, is, uh, this is my, all built on lies. My brother actually just ran out of his Dollar Shave Club razors this morning. Hence. Oh. And he's a veteran. So go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Harmontown yeah. and support and let, our troops. Yeah, exactly. Even the lapsed ones. I mean, uh, as, as far as I've... Uh, look, as far as I'm led to believe, Dan, if, if, if all this liberal claptrap is to be believed, that I can look and smell like a million bucks without paying for it. Right. That seems to... That, that's, that's Obama's America. <laughs> And in the interest of equal times, maybe you're a Republican, so think of it this way. Like, when you do grab your lover by the pussy, <laughs> w- don't you want it to be a smooth, uh, <laughs> uh, frictionless experience? <laughs> Here's your chance. <laughs> I mean, don't, you, don't, just, don't just flock to dollarshaveclub.com. Don't associate them with my liberal agenda is yeah. what I'm saying. Like, this country may need uh, uh, walls around it. We may need uh, uh, an orange rotting pumpkin for, 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 for a president. I, 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 and and I, we will, we're still going to need to shave, and we're still going to want those shaves to but come. But only, only if you type in slash Harmontown. Well, that's, that's, that'll get you a discount. If you go there and type in slash uh, 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 Mark Marin, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Your beard will get longer if you type in Mark Marin. Uh, you, you'll, you'll get a more successful shave, but, but you know, I didn't... The, I, I, we, haven't, we haven't had the president on here, you know? Like, uh, so here we are ta- telling you... It's dollarshaveclub.com slash Harmontown. <laughs> it's just a few bucks a month, no long-term commitment. Jesus you get Christ. a box full of shaving stuff. Is that right? Is that right? I, 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 Jesus, I hope so. It, it, <laughs> or the lights are going to start going out. I here. mean, I, <laughs> we're supposed to do an ad for a tuxedo company that promises me free suits. I'm very excited about and that And to one. answer your earlier question, there's a quarterly process. Feral Audio is a, is a, has a corporate structure. Like, like, you'll, 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 you'll get your money. I just feel so dirty right now. <laughs> Maybe it's because I don't look and smell like a million dollars because of dollarshave.com. That brings up anal bleaching. For... <laughs> like, like, I, I, my girlfriend... Slash like... Harmontown. <laughs> my girlfriend goes... Your first uh... anal bleach is free. <laughs> and if your asshole's not perfectly bleached... 
Will they send someone to bleach your asshole <laughs> to your house? Yes. Absolutely. I need to finish the sentence, my girlfriend, so that people don't go. go, go. I think Dan was going to start saying his. Uh, she 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 got offered an, an anal uh, bleaching because she goes to she she gets like. Uh, like, 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 uh, like, like. There's a guy. It was like laser, laser scrapings, or so, I don't know. She's like, she's, she laser, has a, she has a guy. Laser that, scrapers. I don't know if he's a derm. He's a, he's a guy. He's a skincare guy, or like, like, like. She's got very wonderful soft skin, and like, 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 like. A fake doctor. Uh, the but and at one point he's like, you, oh, he told her. He he said, you know, we do. Anal bleachings, I think, and then he looked at her butthole. He's like, "You don't need it." Good for her. So do, <laughs> good for you. Do, do, do you yeah, just not, Everyone, nothing, nothing more important to me than a bright white butthole. <laughs> uh, you need to wear sunglasses. I, want, I once almost. had one guy trying to tell my ethnicity by the color of my asshole. <laughs> he's like, he's like quarter Cherokee. <laughs> And you're like, like wriggling, and the like, 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 oh, I, uh, yeah, tell more. And then he's like, oh my god, don't go out tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then he falls over, and there's a poison dart in his back. <laughs> yes. um, do, do you? You, uh, you can say I. I no, those records are. Sealed. I don't do. I, I don't do like any alteration to my body at all. So like my like I don't put fake nails on. I don't dye my hair. I don't do anal bleaching. But you must certainly your you need, do, need a shave once in a while. Yeah, I mean like I shave my legs. Yes, but how much are you paying for your razor? <laughs> What about what about lifestyle, diet, exercise, uh, drinking, drugs? Like like, wait, are there? Do you have do's and don'ts? And like, are there sacrifices you make to maintain? Yeah, your... I mean, I definitely like. I don't. I used to like to like to skateboard and stuff like that, and I don't do that anymore. Because oh, now you can scrape a knee and it yeah, exactly. Your... If I have a scrape on my knee, I can't be booked or whatever. But because... what about just like? I mean, are you are you like? Do you have to push? No. The limits of your endurance daily to like maintain a. No, I'm. I don't work out or anything. You, I mean, I, I'm not being glib, but like, part of your work is exercise. Like, like you, you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like I hit that daily heart rate thing that I'm supposed to do. Like, with it hadn't my even job. occurred to me that. that and I like to do a lot of the work. Like, I don't like to just leave it up to the guy because you know I like to perform up to my standard and my quality of what I think. As most I, women do, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, and also I don't like to play dead starfish, so I definitely... Dead like, starfish! Dead do you, starfish. Do you have, like, uh, parts of your body insured? Because I feel like if I, if, if I made my living off of being attractive and being appealing for other people to watch me have sex, I would get my best parts insured. Like I don't. I've heard of, like, some people do, like, uh, Kieran Lee, who is, like, you know, a big-time browsers performer, has, like, an ins- a million-dollar insurance policy on his penis. So- <laughs> his penis is insured with Lloyds of London. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say that about, like, what's her name for, like, there was a, a Entertainment Tonight hostess no, or whatever, Lisa Gibbons or something, like, Vanna- her, her legs are insured with Lloyds Vanna- of Vanna London. White's smile or something like that? Like, didn't she have an insurance thing? I, I mean, know. is that, yeah, I guess, like, okay. No, but I don't. I but mean, you could do that with anything, can't you? Just that's like kind of like just a bad version of playing the stock market. Like I could just say, I'm going to insure this snail with Lloyd's of London, <laughs> and then if it dies, I but, but and then but, and stomp like, on it and collect the goddamn right, money. Right, and they're like, yeah, we'll cover that for sixty dollars a minute until you stomp on it, and, <laughs> and we'll pay you one hundred and twenty. <laughs> and there's a two minute uh, moratorium on snail stomping, and uh, I mean. Yeah, I, I would. I don't like insurance. I think I feel like insurance is like is like like Dino <laughs> says that dessert is where Western society like like where we peaked. Like yeah. that's you knew once we started inventing food that we were just like no, I'm not hungry, but just a little more food just for the taste. <laughs> like from everywhere that it's. And I'm saying as far as capitalism, insurance is the the invention of the idea that like like oh hey man like nice pants yeah be a shame if something happened to him <laughs> are you you mean extortion this, well no i'm not gonna do it i think <laughs> i'm just I, betting it'll I, happen I, i'm almost certain i heard this exact sentence on bang bus <laughs> i'll never forget getting an envelope from an insurance it was it was when christopher reeve was still alive and it was a the envelope was from an insurance company and it was identical to a fucking like extortion racket because it was a picture of post-accident Christopher Reeve 
fell off a horse, like injured his neck. It's uh, like you're 25. I don't know. It's a- Superman. I know. Who you're- okay. Uh, there's been a lot of super supermen. Well, he didn't have horse insurance. That's, uh, that's the problem. He he. And it's a, so it's a picture of of of, of a visibly uh, uh, affected uh, Christopher Reeve. Like he's like like going like this. And it, and there's a quote next to the photo that I'm getting in the mail, and it says, "Don't let what happened to me happen to you." Like what? How is this not a note from a fucking criminal? How is this not identi- How is this not against the law? Don't you're threatening me? Don't let what ha- what? That's what insurance is. It goes. It's a beautiful house, beautiful family. It'd be a shame if something happened. Can I have sixty dollars? But they don't even. The mafia is more honest because what they're saying is, "We'll do it. We'll destroy your house and your family. Give us sixty dollars. You just guaranteed it won't happen. That's more honest exchange of goods and services than insurance, which is saying like, oh, I don't know, something might happen to your house, and you're like, yeah, something might for real. Like a mafia guy might extort me, or a tornado might happen, and they're like, yeah, all kinds of things. Sixty dollars, please. And then the tornado happens, and then they send a guy that's like, tornado? I don't know. <laughs> Looks to me like you're an alcoholic. Maybe you had a rough night. The Tasmanian devil came through here. <laughs> uh, we, and we, we only insured you against tornadoes. <laughs> they're spelled the yes, same, yes. but they're pronounced yes. different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, read the fine umlauts. <laughs> It's not, it's not, insurance isn't a government agency, which is why you know that their business isn't making sure that your cancer, your tornado, your flood won't pay out. They're, they're a business. That's what you know about them from the get-go. The weird thing is that then they're all tied into the government because a guy with a gun can pull you over and demand to see their paperwork. And if you're reaching for the glove box the wrong way and you're the wrong color, I'm welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the angry grandpa portion of the show. I just like I like to I like to round up a group of soldiers and porn stars and <laughs> I just shake my cane. Guardians of vitality and 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 violence, just lend me your power. <laughs> I guess everybody go home and watch Westworld and uh, and, and and just uh, to do the highlights of the debates. I saw him. She was, uh, it's just more of him fucking loud mouthing it and like interrupting her. And he's like, like, like he spends the whole time going, "Can I tell you? You let her go a minute. You let her go a whole minute." It's like an eight year old, and I don't even care. I hate all politicians and I hate government, but but I yeah, mean, Megan Gans. I, I I was I was traveling today. I flew home, so I was in a car and I, I, I re- recorded the debate. I'll watch it later, maybe. And I. And and the only time I've ever truly loved Twitter was today because all of my funny friends were being hilarious. Yeah, but Megan Gans is a writer that works on Community. She wrote something. It wasn't even a joke. She just, she just wrote, crying, um, you act professional and play by the rules and you get interrupted by men. And that, 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 that to me says the fucking whole – the whole shooting Yeah, and he kept right talking there. about how she gets to interrupt him and all this stuff. It was like you can't – like that was my biggest fear is that she – what she's working against is you can't – you can't compete with him without looking dumber than you are. Like, 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 because who would, and uh, she didn't get to choose her opponent. <laughs> it's like, kind of a, it's like, she, like, I almost went to like, like, like she, the six hours after she wins, two things are going to happen. The Republican party is going to start, um, uh, 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 maligning her by maligning him. The Republican party is already, they already basically disavowed him, but they're gonna six hours after her inauguration or election, they're gonna they're gonna start saying, uh, uh, "There's a there's a woman in the White House, and the only reason is because she she her she, it was a one one woman she went race up against an impotent man. Yeah, yeah and... she went she went up against a weird orange guy from a Doritos commercial. <laughs> like they're gonna be like, it wasn't even a fair election. Hey Lee, <laughs> I, I Camp Pendleton is it very Trump? Is it? I mean, I know they hate Hillary, probably right. What's super cool though is that at the same time it's in Southern California, so like on Camp Pendleton. Okay, so like the the debate that w- or the debate that went on a couple weeks ago, I uh, right now I just like scan IDs at the gate and I'm like, you can come on, you're brown, you can't. You can come on, you're brown, you can't, because that's my job. 
But uh, Jesus Christ, fucking! So all these people came through with like their Trump stickers and their Trump hats, and they were like, "Yeah, Trump is stomping Hillary in the bait tonight." And I was like, "Yeah, I bet he is." <laughs> but uh, like once you once you leave Camp Pendleton and you like you go thirty minutes north or even down to like uh, the gas lamp in San Diego and stuff, suddenly you start seeing all these like Priuses with Bernie stickers, yeah, and, yeah. which is that that was our dude. Now, have, have but, you ever seen the, at, the movie At Close Range with Sean Penn and Chris Walken? Fuck no. Because you, if, if you guys have not seen this, or people that are subscribers, please rent that because this guy is fucking Sean Penn from from Matt Close Ranch. <laughs> Do you right. know uh, uh, Mr. Walken well enough to just the short Chris? No. You and him. Are- <laughs> I swear to God. It sounds like it sounds like Christopher Walken is joining us for a closing uh, rap. Yeah. Uh, it's time to. <laughs> Put a beat on <laughs> before you get peed on. <laughs> you want to beat Dan? Yeah. You, wanna, you, 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 do the, uh, you do the it. you do the Vincent Price bridge well, as Christopher it. Walken. I'm going off my phone right now because I forgot my fucking iPad. All right. Yeah. Oh, hey, Zach, you got a beat? Yeah, Zach, you got better beats. Give us a beat. I'll, I'll, I'll come in as Christopher Walken. We gotta end this thing because we're, we're, we're running late. Now. Yeah, we're late. That's not, I'm trying. To, yeah, close the show. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Riley, Riley, yeah. if you want to get in there, yeah. You want to rap, Riley? Yeah. 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 The sex industry needs regulation, but it can be self-regulated. They're doing fine. They don't get AIDS all the time. Vote no on Prop 60. If you want to get swifty with Rick and Morty fan, Riley Reed. Go to readmylips.com. She's got all you need. Dollarshaveclub.com. Slash Harmontown is getting down with the military servants in the Pentagon. The brothers cook. They're going to give you a different look at military service and what it's like to serve. I fucked your mama so hard she had to swerve around my dick. But let's pick a different direction because of all the misogyny. We'll talk about fucking your daddy for one night only. I fucked your daddy so hard. He had to run into the yard Holding his butt Saying what about my Scalp reduction surgery That I had Look it up There's a story I love, uh, uh, About Donald Trump Getting scalp reduction surgery Based on the advice Of his wife Marla Maples And then getting so mad At how botched it was That he Beat her Assaulted her And raped her Break it down Okay, when you talk about grabbing by the pussy, I got a feeling you haven't touched a lot of pussy. I don't think that your dick works, and I don't want to disparage people whose dicks don't work. Because I don't want to live in a society based on sexual acumen. I'd like to leave it to the professionals uh, and watch them and find a girlfriend cool enough to, to just be content with a giant fat walrus running on top of her. But that's me. Yo, yo, yo. Dollar Shave Club's gonna give you a dollar shave. But that doesn't mean quality will be saved. Just your money. Your skin will be smooth. I fucked your mama while she was on the move. I mean your daddy. I fucked your daddy. I fucked your daddy. My baddie. Yo, don't caddy on me. I'm just a laddie. I'm just a grown-up rapper. I'm a laddie. I'm your dad. I'm your son. I'm rapping Johnson. I'm Johnson Jr. Let me tell you how to rap. Okay. First, you say a line. Okay, how about my name is... Rapping... You're fucking up already. Just Thank you for coming to Harmontown, everybody. That's been our show. Let's hear it for Alex and Lee Cook. The Cook Brothers. Riley Reed, everybody. Go to readmylips.com and uh, support her as an independent producer and entrepreneur. Yeah. Vote, and vote, vote no, no on 60. Vote no on 60. Go to Dollar Shave Club to get your asshole bleached this evening. <laughs> What? New York Comedy Festival? Oh, the New York Comedy Festival. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your thank you for your sacrifice and uh, for We love you all. Drive fast, take chances. Thank you so much for coming. We're all. gonna be at the New York Comedy Festival. Like, uh, I guess that, that helps.
you get any of that? It's a good show! Feral Audio